Devil's Tower is located in Wyoming, but it's still considered part of the Black Hills. Devil's Tower was set aside by Teddy Roosevelt as the nation's first national monument. Park at the Visitor Center and take the short walk around the tower. Everything's better in the West. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a strange geologic feature that is much more impressive in person than on video. Every time I visit Devil's Tower, I forget how big and impressive it is. The paved walking paths wind through trees and boulders and provide different angles of the tower. It's hard to explain, but it's really just a joyful place to be. Everyone I talk to says it's just a cool place. Native American legends explain the vertical lines on the tower as scratches by a giant bear who was trying to eat some people on top. The tower was featured in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and the local campground shows the film every night. Hundreds of rock climbers climb to the top every year on one of many different established routes, but only one man parachuted onto the top of the tower. In 1941, George Hopkins landed on top of the tower and planned to rappel down to the ground. But his equipment fell off the ledge and he was stranded on the tower for six days in terrible weather. The story got national attention even during World War II. He earned the nickname Jumpin' George for the stunt. He's lucky he didn't get hit by lightning as the tower gets struck often. If you look close, you can see the white spots on the tower where it has been struck. Near the campground is the Wind Peace Sculpture, also called the Circle of Smoke Sculpture. It was created by a Japanese artist in 2008 to represent peace. And here's another prairie dog town. While it may seem like there are tons of prairie dogs around, their population is only a tiny fraction of what it once was. Farmers don't like them, but ecologists consider them a keystone species and they are protected in some areas. It's worth a half a day to walk around the tower, see the wind piece sculpture, and to stop and see the prairie dogs. And it is certainly worth a detour on your great American road trip. This year we stayed in teepees nearby the tower. This was a fun family experience that I think the kids will remember for a long time. If not for the teepees, for playing baseball with cow chips. Welcome to the West. Wait, you don't touch the poo with your hands? What? Oh. <laughs> Alright, we slept in a teepee last night. I couldn't believe how windy it was. It got up to 20 miles per hour and our teepee was just fine. And it rained. It didn't get wet. So we, we survived the teepee experience. It was kind of cool hearing the canvas beating in the wind much of the night. In the morning, we caught up with the owner, Juliana. She's an absolute trip to talk to. She's every bit a part of the experience as the teepees are. What's the most common question you get here? Is it gonna fall down on me? Are the snakes gonna bite me at night? Why teepees? It was the least expensive living structure I could find after I bought the property. And then I went, oh, this is a cool place to live bought the property, I put up a teepee to live in. Tourists would not stop pulling in, taking a picture of me, brushing my teeth in the morning, and I realized I was providing something the National Park didn't. Some information about how the people who lived here lived. So I get to actually talk about the um, brilliance of this structure, and as well as its portability and its sustainability. 